Heineken trying to expand in emerging markets to make up for Western Europe's sluggish economies. Heineken is also the maker of Amstel and Newcastle Brown Ale. Well, Heineken's chief financial officer, Renee Hooft Grofland, joins us now. John with me because he just likes to talk about beer. <laughs> um, okay, first off, <laughs> since, we're ta- since we're on Joms Day, just give me a picture of your hiring situation now. Are you going to hire this year? Um, in the organization, we are expanding here in the U.S. mainly to get more feet on the ground for the on-premise business. We mm. want to expand in the on-premise business, um, and we are hiring new people in that uh, that area. How many more people? Just a ballpark. Um, that is in, in uh, so we have a sales force here of. Um, around uh, 350 people and we add another 50, uh, 50 okay. people there. So right, that so is uh, substantial. One yeah. of the companies putting money to work, hiring people then. Yeah. Um, what about commodity prices? You know, the rise that we've seen in grain prices elsewhere, how much is that going to affect the growth for Heineken? Well, the impact in uh, this year, 2011, will be low single digits. Uh, obviously, that is much lower than if you would compare it with today's spot prices. Um, but we have been hedging uh, a lot. We have been forward buying. We have longer term contracts. So the effect on our business in 2011 will be, uh, will be limited. Rene, you're the numbers guy, not the marketing guy. But how do you convince people to keep buying Heineken right now when so many people say, hmm, should I buy a Budweiser, should I buy a Heineken in a tough economy? Uh, obviously, when you uh, sell a beer at a 50% price premium, you have to work hard to convince consumers to, uh, to, to stay loyal to the product. Uh, the recipe is, first of all, provide them with the best beer there is. Uh, secondly, put good programs, advertising, etc. around it. Even in declining markets, we see that the Heineken brand continues to grow, continues to outperform the total market, and continues to outperform the international premium segment. Uh, what about acquisitions? Because I know you, know, you recently, I think, um, raised your dividend, um, and you also as well, are you're completing a share buyback program. So uh, you've got some of those, ca- you know, you've put some cash to work in those areas. So what about putting cash to work in acquisitions? Well, we have expanded the, the company in a big way and we have rebalanced the footprint of the company from a predominantly mature market brewer 10 years ago to now where we have more than 66% of our volumes in emerging markets. The acquisition of the beer businesses of FEMSA, but also the activities we have in Africa or in the, in the Far East have rebalanced completely the profile of, of, of the company and we will and benefit from that because obviously emerging markets are growing right. and the developed markets are, are, are more stable, obviously. Uh, very, very quickly on buying, do you think Warren Buffett might ever be an investor in your company? He likes the beer business. You mentioned FEMSA, which had ties to Coca-Cola, of course, which is a, a big holding of his. Would, uh, has Warren Buffett ever knocked on your door? Um, he has knocked. Uh, he has not knocked on our, our, our door. I, I will not comment who should invest in uh, us or not. But we are very happy with a very strong group of long-term shareholders who are backing the company on our journey to become bigger and better. Renee, thank you. Appreciate you stopping by.